now we mm. are going to go on to our talking point sure. right mm -hmm. and today's talking point um because what we do each week i try to have like a topic that we can discuss sure. a current affairs story or something that's going on in the press or an issue now today we're going to speak about um jeremy corbyn he made a statement and he went to somewhere okay. to information right here. he went to like a school he's talking about black history month let me read what it says anyway so this is um from the independent so on a visit to mark black history month corbyn says black history is british history and it should not be confined to a single month each year it is vital that future generations understand the role that black britons pl have played in our country's history and the struggle for racial equality in light of the windrush scandal black history month has taken on a renewed significance and it is more important now than ever that we learn and understand as a society the role and legacy of the British Empire, colonialism, and slavery. Okay. So, like, I'm, I actually like Jeremy Corbyn, and I, and I think it's fantastic that he's coming forward yeah. and speaking out. So I thought that would be the topic that we're going to talk about. It's Black History Month, and I, I spoke about last week how much I, I, I used to sneer at it, and it's mm. like a, you know, every month you get out, have a nice bit of taste, a bit of cultural food it's a bit it takes us back to the same time and i think it's a nice thing to say but the practicalities of, of of doing that and also the remit even he's talking about the fact that they want to teach about colonialism the empire and all of that that's great but there's so much more exactly because um that's what i was saying i've always been brought up my mum would always push through to me our history is much bigger than slavery mm. and this is what they they always serve to take us back to a certain point yeah Black History Month, it starts with slavery. And I, I, growing up, that's where I thought my history began. Like, I've got a poem called Stand Up and Be Counted, and mm. the lines from it are... Um, Divided and conquered, fractured, beaten and singed. Mm. We're still living the legacy of Willie Lynch's dream. Mm. They'd have us believe this is where our history begins. But before we were enslaved, we walked this earth as kings. Fill in the gaps oh. that his story forgot. This may take some time, because the gaps are a lot. Then I go on to talk about the Moors. Mm. who I had no idea about. I had no idea that the Moors lived here, like in Europe, for 800 years. They don't go back that far. They don't yeah. talk about the, the impact that they had on the Renaissance or educating. It was, it was Europe's educational home. See, I, I always just assumed this was common knowledge. I was very lucky to have access to a lot of uh, books and material at, mm. at home. Sure. So I just kind of thought that this is I something that all black Moors, families discuss. Didn't... See, it's interesting. <laughs> like, uh, you're, right. you're, you're a historian. So, mm, I, so. I like what he said. It's cute. Yeah. <laughs> it's cute. <laughs> it's like, oh. No, let's go he on. said the thing. So, no? Okay, but, that whole one. The, I just don't like that whole white savior thing. Yeah. Two, yeah. he said black history, we need to learn about colonialism, that's it. But it's like, be specific. If you're talking about black British history, cool. If you're saying black history, yeah. well, are you going to cover our, like, Six million years of history. What is it you're actually going to be talking about? Plus, who's going to be teaching history? And then if you're going to say about colonialism, then the, the conversation of reparations is going to come up. Mm -hmm. It's like, if you're going to talk about British doctrine and black history, you, you, you're going to have to throw everything out. Yeah. And if you're going to do that for one month, that's, that's poor. And I, I, I don't like the system anyway. Mm -hmm. And you're right, it's broken. And it kind of works in their favour as well. And... It, it, it's, I just, ah, oh, just, to me, I'm just tired. Like, I spent years fighting racism. Yeah. They got tired. Like, see these great hairs? It's from fighting racism. <laughs> like, it's from the repeat. It's from fighting them. I was like, you know, the best way for me to deal with this situation is for me to empower my people. Mm -hmm. Because it's knowledge, they say knowledge is the power, definitely. But knowledge is just a tool. It's what you do with it. So yeah. we can have black history and people can be like, yeah, great. But what do we do with it after that? If we're going to do it for that one month, that's poor. Yeah, Plus our young people, like, at the moment, like some of our young people, some of our black children are like glory hunters. They will celebrate blackness when it's popping, when it's nice, yeah, yeah, when it's real, when it's the culture, food, athletics, whatever. At the time, it's like the other little bits, the political side, the historical side, they're like, mm, mm, yeah, yeah, man. because they have been so conditioned to see blackness as a couple of things. They don't see it as a, a noun, adjective, or, uh, or, or pronoun, anything like that. They just see it as black, it's just a culture, you dip into it when you want it, and you dip out of it. That's it. Yeah. So, it, I just, I, again, it's cute, but I mean, I'm I don't tired. think he's even saying, like, um, 
it should be a monthly thing. He said, he said, he it, said it, be, shouldn't. it shouldn't. But, but my, my issue with that, and I, I agree with everything you said, but mm. my issue, issue with that is even if you are going to include it every month, it, why are we labelling it as as black history and why isn't in like i learned about the greeks the romans the, you know everything in the, the uk the elizabethan the, the mm -hmm. empire we learn about all of those things yeah. so black history is world history and it should just mm -hmm. be integral in exactly. all textbooks and so they'd have to just that for me it's just throw away the whole out. curriculum and it is dead and that's exactly. what i'm saying the that's renaissance like, i learned about the renaissance mm -hmm. you know oh, the renaissance the great renaissance you never told me that the renaissance would you go and to go and learn from the moors yeah, of course and they're the ones that gave you street lights they're the ones that gave you um sanitation and heat central heating mm -hmm. and they're the ones that taught you about because it, why isn't this just to add an extra chapter into that book yeah. to yeah. show. So they give you trinkets, so they give you that little bit of... Because the Renaissance was the most dangerous part for black history because in like 1453, you had the movement of something called iconoclasm, which is basically... Uh, you had like emperors, leaders, kings and queens from Europe that were saying, all right, here's what we're going to do. We're going to get rid of the Moors that are here, especially mm. the ones in like Grenada. And then we're going to start painting over some of the saints and some of the, like, so when they decided to, and this is like before Columbus made his way all the way over there, okay. right? So we're going about 40 years prior to Columbus setting, setting off, they already started to change the images of Jesus Christ. They started to change the images of kings and queens and started making them lighter. So when he came over with his doctrine as well, that was funded literally by the Pope, the, a lot of the like, later one Romans that came forward is like, all right, we're going to eradicate everything. And obviously, if you go, for him to talk about black history, he has to say, because the most decorated queen is Queen Elizabeth I. Everybody loves Queen Elizabeth, not everybody, but they love Queen Elizabeth <laughs> yeah. I. Yeah. But they take out the parts where she commissioned Sir Francis Drake and Sir John Hawking in the mid-1500s to go to Guinea and kidnap some slaves. The first enslavement was by Sir Francis Drake. No, they called him I Sir. know that name, Sir Francis Drake. So well, I know about his yeah. Because Sir Francis Drake is labelled as the first person to circumnavigate the earth. Yeah. Yes. So that's how, and they did that, he's, they said in like from the 1570s, mm -hmm. he circumnavigated the earth, and he's like, he's a famous guy. But his cousin is Sir John Hawking, and they went to Guinea, kidnapped 800, slaughtered 400, took 400, brought them to Europe. And then she was like, yeah, keep going, keep going, in commission. If you go and look at um, Sir Francis Drake, he's got an emblem, um, like, kind of like a coat of arms sort of thing. Yeah. Um, and with his emblem is, it's got a picture of, like, a black man on there with curly hair and everything, and behind him is a white person. So this was, and he's also known for the Spanish Armada, so he sailed yeah. to the Caribbean and intervened, and yeah. but the Spanish were chasing around the Caribbean, so, like, what Pirates of the Caribbean is about. So he's known for taking cargo, which was Africans. He's also known for kidnapping Africans in a part of Guinea, which is like Ghana from Benin to Nigeria and yep. around that section there. So then bring them up to Europe. So he's known. And plus, what is even worse is that in London Bridge by Borough Market, there is a slave ship, uh, yeah. which is the replica, yeah. which is called the Golden Hind, which is a replica of the ship that he used to circumnavigate the earth. But he started from 1570. But he missed out the prior... It's like, well, so he sailed around and kidnapped Africans and slaughtered them. So you're forgetting to mention that. Plus, you go around Britain, it's like, okay, we've got banks, so we've got Barclays, we've got all these banks yeah. that were funded and insured slave ships that was happening during that time. Like, hey, hence, uh, hence why, hey, I, I, hey, hence how I had this. I know, he's really <laughs> hence how I had this. <laughs> if you go into schools, you've got globes and maps, especially in um, geography along, uh, on classroom walls. Mm. That map there was created in 1569 by um, a cartographer called Mercator, something like that. And it was for sailors to travel from one place to another, like a straight line. That's how it was designed. Yeah. We're still using that today. That was in 1569. It was for sailors, for European sailors to travel around the world. What were they travelling doing in the 1500s? Mm -hmm. So, you've got something else called the Peter's Projection Map. So, my sister, if you can just hold up that bit there. So, you've got this map, which they don't have in schools, which is a reflection of the actual sizes of continents and the actual sizes um, of countries in relation to how they are literally planned That's out. That's Right. That's inaccurate, yeah. So, so, and you go around to look, if you, any, when you're watching, right, go on Google and type in world map 
Look at the size of Africa. Yeah. Look at the size of Greenland. They make it relatively the same size. However, what is actually true is Africa's 14 times size bigger than Greenland. Yeah. So what you got to understand is anything along the line of the equator below you see as negative, you see mm. as poor, it's called the third world country. They break it down. They actually want to separate themselves and say that's the first world. Sort of like parts of Arabia is called the second world, and the third world is all the places with darky hue people. So what they've done is that they shrunk all these continents and even shrunk here to make it seem small in size. It's like when you go into shopping centres and you go to shopping markets and you go into, to, um, let's say you're going to go buy cereal. Mm. Kellogg seems to be at eye level because yeah, they pay yeah. extra money. So as you go in, so you don't want to bend yeah, down. Yeah, 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 so they have it like that. So it's all about lines. So when you look at a map, you seem to go here, look at Europe, you look at England, and da, da, da. it's further up. But they've brought themselves down. Another cheeky thing they've done as well, which kind of upset them in school. It's changed geography as well. It's oh, not just oh, it's not yeah. adding things in. It's, it's, we <laughs> have a lot of stuff to, to correct <laughs> yeah. and to do that. That's why I said you have to dash out the whole curriculum because it's false. This, exactly. You know? What they've done, they've called Europe. A continent, mm. which is not, which is not, because Europe is a continent is meant to be surrounded by three waters. Yeah. Europe doesn't. It's here. It's actually Eurasia. Mm. So they've actually separated themselves and called themselves a powerhouse of Europe when it, Europe doesn't exist because it's landmass. Like Australia here, that's a continent because it's a yeah. mass. Yeah. It's a big, huge place, landmass. Europe doesn't stop. It just gets to Russia and it goes straight over to China. So they've lied and called themselves uh, Europe as a continent when it's actually Eurasia. It's yeah. a lot of nonsense. So we have to change geography, we have to change English, we have to change um, history, we've got to change even science. Science is so bad. It's, it's, it's so poor because science is what funded mm, and hey. literally the, the stereotypes that we get today mm. where black people are lazy and X, Y, Z and yeah. we get called monkeys and stuff like that comes from scientists that were making works and doing works mm. in Oxford University, so many universities in Europe, but mainly in the UK, they was ones that's pushing up the knowledge and the information. Europeans, especially you got like uh, Mendel's Law, yeah, when, or he talks about, um, that. you've got a few that come through. So you've got Professor Leakey, who went to Africa and said the oldest woman is in, a, uh, in the world is an African woman. And you've got Mendel's Law saying um, light eyes are recessive um, and darker eyes are more dominant. But that's the small pieces. But you've got Carl Linnaeus, you've got James Marion Sims, who was the father of gynecology mm -hmm. who he created the vaginal speculum and he perfected that piece, that tool that, you know, you, when you go to, yeah, anyway, moving on, right? He perfected it by performing that on three, over 300 African women we without no say. Yeah. So this is all coming up from this part here, which is the devil. Mm -hmm. I know America is, is seen as like the worst place ever, but Americans are literally our English people, they just move over. But it's the British who literally, if you want to put, if you look at the, the definition of a devil, literally in the dictionary, Oxford Dictionary, Britain will come up. Literally, everything that Britain has done. You've got um, Tasmania right here, right? And they literally went there and wiped out a Decimated. whole... And they got this Tasmanian devil. Devil, devil the yeah. cartoon Decimated. made them see right, literally a whole set of people. Same with um, some of the indigenous people in Australia. So go ahead. I know we was talking earlier about the story that came out about the leprechauns of Ireland. Yeah, straight from here, the Twa people, the um, uh, the Kosa people. Yeah. From here, they now they migrate up um, to and that's what the leprechaun is meant. To, the leprechaun. Um, it's meant to be someone with curly hair and ginger, so yeah. there's other. And if you look at some of the ginger haired people from um, South Africa, it's meant to be them short, tw um, small, yeah. small people. Right, and they made shoes and things like that. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Leprechaun mm -hmm. is meant to be magical. And that's where the elves and the shoemaker, those stories. Yeah, yeah, yeah. When yeah. I read that, I was like, that, you know, and it's like, that's what I mean in terms of the history. Yeah. We need to go back and correct these things. It's like, I, I don't even know if it's even so much of a correction. Because even if we do all of that, like you just mentioned, all of the books that we, that we, yeah. that we learn from, sure. from, from throughout school to university, like if you actually look at where the literature comes from, yeah. Yeah. the literature is westernized. Like we don't have African philosophers, not just even from Africa, from everywhere. So, mm. so but my solution personally is I just don't engage with that system. I yeah. don't send my, my kids into school, that system yeah. Yeah. Full, full stop. Mm -hmm. Because even if we amend and edit and put all of the correct information into those books, it's still being taught by a system that is corrupt yep. um the literature is not diverse enough whether or not you're studying english whether you're studying sociology psychology the literature is, is biased fundamentally yep. um and if it is going to be edited who's it going to be edited by 
It's so true. Not our community. No. You know, it's still going to be doctored. It's still going to be policed. Um, so for me personally, yeah. I just, I, I do believe that, that there's a place for the school system. I know not everyone can make the decision to homeschool. For me, we all have a responsibility mm. to homeschool. Homeschool doesn't mean that your kids don't, I mean, for me, it means that my kids don't engage in the system. But for some people, that will mean you still educate your children at home. I, I went to school, but everything I needed, it was go to the tree of knowledge. We had encyclopedias, we had books, we had literature that had come back from Ghana that was there for us to read. We had texts that were translated that weren't British or westernised texts. Nice. And we were constantly having conversations at home. That was normal to me. And we need to continue to do that as a community mm. to not rely on a broken system to teach. This is why we need people like you. And people like you. <laughs> sharing, no, I, sharing knowledge. I thought so you that, should you know, be, because like... I got so much respect for Ghana. I mean, Ghana, they literally like just pushed the envelope was like, listen, do you know what I mean? Mm. I'm a Pan-Africanist as well, so I love me some Marcus Garvey. Uh, and I wish more people, especially when I work with families, and mm. I, I, I really, really wish more people, more parents, more guardians take up what you're saying and say, do you know what, let me, because it literally starts at home. When you go into Waterstones and you go into like, the Black History section, 80% of the books are written by Europeans. Yeah, I, I don't mess with that. Like, <laughs> what, if, what does that actually well, this say? Is why, this is why we need people like you writing those books and mm. getting them out there and being credible. And, and yeah. you know, so that we, we've got something to tap into. And now we're in a position where we're taking ownership. Um, yeah. For example, I have a friend, Chris Sibia, who does um, London's finest distributor. Yeah. Yeah, our story's out. Our own. We, we need people like that. And also, we really, need a lot of people don't think that African literature, for example, or any kind of uh, um, African text predates slavery. Like, oh, you mean, they'll, they'll be like, oh, you mean, you mean like the stories? Or the, no, no, no. There have been people writing, writing literature in our languages for our people, not, not for, for the West, for, for centuries like, upon centuries upon Timbuktu. centuries, you know? When you used to hear the word Timbuktu, mm. it's, a, it's a make believe place. place, right? And that yeah. same poem, I, I, I don't, I, we run out of time, I was thinking I might try to close on it, but Timbuktu, like these, like, Kush, Timbuktu, you, mm. hear, these, you hear these names, Timbuktu was an imaginary place, and they say, oh, what do you think, Timbuktu? Yeah. It's like, Mocking. no, these yeah. are the places yeah. where you actually went to go and get your facts and yeah. your knowledge. Yeah. This is this is the foundation. Mm. So we run out of time. <laughs> <laughs> just getting started as well. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Just yeah. Just but I would like to thank you both oh, um, for coming. Thank you so much. Mm -hmm. It's been an amazing show, and I'm definitely going to have you both back individually. Sure. I think I think I might have to start doing individual feature shows because it's really not enough time. But then I would miss out on the opportunity to. To make connect these, connect, yeah. these connections. So I really, really appreciate you coming. Thank Do you, you have any thank yous? Um, I just want to thank my ancestors, man, because I live with them every day. Mm -hmm. and, and, and like without them, I wouldn't exist. Mm -hmm. And for the ones that made it through the middle passage, you know what I mean? Like if they didn't survive, I wouldn't be here because that lineage that goes back. Um, so I have to give thanks to those that came. I'm standing on their shoulders at the end of the day. And um, I give thanks for music because it was music that, and poetry. <laughs> <laughs> that got me to where I am today so I just want to thank my ancestors thank the ones that are here who are creating the kings and queens that we're, we're, we're bringing forward thank you two now you, you two you. like you two are the, the essence of of, of, of everything I mean uh, the woman is you know what I mean obviously through European doctrine it's a patriarchal society it's a patriarchal doctrine knowledge information the enlightened ones that came through and said okay when you talk about that like Karl uh, Marx it's always European men, whatever. I'm tired of them. It's about celebrating our women. And if you go through black history, you see that throughout the continent of Africa, even in um, uh, some, yeah, in the Caribbean and in, go to Brazil, do you know what I mean? Largest population of black people outside of Nigeria. Like, you, you go through their doctrines and you see some of their books. It's like, wow, like, black men and women are, are celebrating. And we have to... We have to get back to that, do you know what I mean? And, and Europeans know it, but they just, they just, they don't, do you know what I mean? Do you know what I mean? Europe is named after African Phoenician goddess Europa. So that's who Zeus gave the island of Crete to. So Europe is named after a black woman. When you go and check out the, if you, if you Google, if you Google, if you Google, if you Google the original, <laughs> lastly, you don't believe me, yeah? Go and look, when they created the euro, and they had to get the yeah. one euro coin, on the flip side of it, 
is the African goddess Europa. She's on there. They put it on there for us to see. Okay. I mean, going on from that, and I'll, I'll keep it short, um, but I just want to thank all the powerful women in, in my life, um, mm. those that are close to me, my ancestors, but also just the divine feminine energy that seems to be, mm. that I seem to be attracted into my life, people like yourself, the, all the wonderful poems I know, and for a short, short quote to end on, woman, she, I, queen, I've got a very strong legacy with very strong genes, from a very long line of very strong queens. I close my eyes and I can picture the scenes. I walk where they walk, I dream what they dreamed. They throw, flow through my veins, it's their blood that I bleed. Women, she, I, queens. Thank you so much. You're Thank you for watching Naturally. <sighs> Join us next week. It's gonna be another, actually there's no show next week because I'm going on holiday. <laughs> we have Black Women's Fashion and Latouche the writer. Thank you. Goodbye.